to the state's exhibit 134. Those are text messages from Courtney to Dennis on October 14, 2015. And when she was asked about those text messages on direct, she tells Mr. McKelvey that those text messages where she tells um, Dennis to leave him alone, that those text messages have to do with my flat. And why did she tell you that those text messages had to do with my flat? Because at that time, on direct, she tells you, because he keeps texting him and calling him. And we know that's not true. How do we know that's not true? Because Mike Black's records prove, and Dennis's records prove, and Lieutenant Finnan told you, there's no communication between Dennis and Mike Black after July 31st, 2015. No communication whatsoever. So when Courtney tells you that the text messages from October 2015 are Dennis threatening Mike Black, that's not true. We know that's not true. The person that Courtney is communicating with in 2015, and the person that we know Dennis went to his house, is Mike Robinson. That's who Courtney was texting at the time. That's who Dennis was having communications with. And Mike Robinson tells you that, that he came to his house that he accused him of having an affair with Courtney. And he tells you that that's because they were sending sex messages or sexting between each other, talking about sex and different things. <coughs> Courtney and Keith Whitcliffe would have you believe that when Dennis refers to Mike Black, he calls him old boy. But remember, when I crossed her, I asked her, didn't you give a statement that says he doesn't like using his name? He calls him either dude or MB. At no point during her initial interview with the police does she tell them that old boy is Mike Black, and that's how Dennis refers to him. you to believe is that she is so caught up with all these threats that Dennis is making against Mike Black. She is so worried and she is so concerned about Mike Black. A man who she you hear on her conversation she loves. I love him. But not once does she do anything about that. Not once does she tell anybody about these alleged message and it's in the package to Mike Black about the fact that Dennis came over, he took her phone, and she tells him in that text message, she tells Mike Black, he's done. Mike Black's response to he's done, meaning he, he's done, he's going to hurt you, is okay. That's his response to that text colloquy between them. Okay. What is Courtney doing at that point? She's stirring up trouble, like only a woman can do. A woman who's involved with not one man, but three men that we know. Courtney came here and she wanted to portray herself as an innocent year old girl who's pursued by three men. Dennis, her legal husband, Mike Black, her lover, Mike Robinson, her older brother, who she now has children. But I know that you as the jurors can see Courtney for exactly who she is, <coughs> a skilled actress. She tortures Dennis. She treats him like trash. You heard her call him stupid and call him a moron. She tells him constantly, constantly she hates him. Text messages, phone calls, she hates him. 
You heard her on the three consensual phone calls where she's trying to get Dennis to confess to a crime that he did commit. She tells you, <coughs> F you, Dennis, and I don't know how many times she says it because I lost count. This is how she treats her husband. She's filled with nothing but disdain for Dennis. That's on the morning of November 10th, these phone calls where she's calling him these names and saying horrible things about him. Then let's talk about the jail call. <clears throat> then we have Courtney, the loving wife. Courtney, the, the woman who's concerned about Dennis. Courtney, the woman who can't believe that Dennis has been arrested for murder. Courtney, who tells Dennis, it's all over the papers that you've been charged with murder, that you've been charged with having a gun. Then let's talk about Courtney's other role, the drug addic addicted manipulator. The women, the woman playing men against each other. She stirs up trouble again between Michael Black and Dennis. She gets two men involved in an incident that had nothing to do with them. She's the minute she Den Dennis leaves her house after the incident regarding the pills, she tells Michael Black and she tells Michael Robinson. And we know from the text messages to Michael Black and Michael Robinson that she's talking about the fact that somebody has to put hands on Dennis. Somebody has to hurt Dennis. She's plotting with both these men to do away with Dennis or make sure that somebody hurts Dennis. What's interesting about that is, is that she doesn't, Mike Robinson and her don't want Mike Black to know anything about the involvement that Mike Robinson why is that? Because she wants to see what Mike Black, a married man with children, is going to do to defend her honor. Remember that phone conversation that Mr. McKelvey played for you? The phone conversation that Courtney tapes on her own. She's taping a conversation while they're waiting to find out what happened to Michael Black. She talks to Dennis about pills. They get upset. They start yelling. And at some point, he confronts her, and I mean Dennis, confronts her about texting with Mike Black every single day. She denies it. Throughout all his accusations against her, she denies it. She denies that she's having an affair with Michael Black. But we know that not to be true. We know she's having an affair with Michael Black. She tells you by her own words that it started sometime in May or June. And why is that phone call so important? Because during that phone call, Dennis is confronting her and telling her, why are you telling me that you're not talking to him every day when I clearly see that at 10.38, 10.38 on November 9th, you texted him. Why is that time so important? 10.38, Michael Black was dead already. If Dennis knew that Michael Black was dead, or if Dennis was the person that shot Michael Black, why would he be concerned that Courtney is texting Mike Black at 10.38? That, ladies and gentlemen, is reason. Going back to that phone conversation, remember she tells you that somebody comes to the door while she's taping the conversation with Dennis. And who is that? The police. The police come to the door. At, hours after the murder, they get to 21 Farragut. When she's taken to the police station, where she spends at least eight to 10 hours, she does three recorded phone conversations with Dennis. She gives statements to the police. And we know for a fact that some of the statements that she may have given them were not recorded. We know that the consensual that she agreed to was not recorded. It was given verbally. There's no signature, but obviously there was a verbal conversation between her and the detectives. 
when she's there, she never tells the police officers about the fact that her and Mike Robinson were trying to figure out a way to put hands on Dennis. <coughs> she never tells the police about the fact that her and Mike Black are talking about having somebody put their hands on Dennis. She never tells them about the fact that Mike Black tells her, I know somebody who can do it for cheap. She only talks about Dennis. Again, Courtney, the actress. Courtney, who's crying hysterically over the fact that Dennis is in jail. Courtney, who can't believe what's happening. Courtney, who talks to the cops for hours about Dennis and doesn't mention anything about what she herself was planning. During those jail conversations, she tells Dennis, it's in the paper, Dennis. It's in the paper. You're being charged with murder and weapons. She talks about his bail. She tells Dennis that it's all in the newspaper. And what does a man in jail have time to do? Or what is a man in jail going to do? But read the newspapers. The newspapers that talk about Michael Black and his involvement. The newspapers that give details about what happened. There's issues about how Dennis found out about the 911 call. Well, it's clear. In the conversation with Courtney, the jail conversation, she tells him, there's a 911 call. There was a kid. He gets shot. He goes inside. And this is Mike Black. He goes inside and he makes a 911 call. That's how Dennis knows about the 911 call. Courtney tells him. Let's look at Courtney today. Courtney's now with her big brother, Mike Robinson. They already had one child back in 2017. She's expecting another child. Courtney, who by February of 2016, a woman who loved Mike Black, a woman who was so emotional about the death of Mike Black, but by February is living with Mike Robinson. Mike Robinson, the man that she was sexting with while she's involved with Mike Black. Mike Robinson, the man who tells her, don't tell Black about me. Let's keep this quiet. Let's keep this secret. At some point, Mr. McKelvey talks to Courtney about some threats she may have received. And you heard her testimony. She talks a lot about some threats that Dennis made to her text messages that uh, Dennis sent her, talking about um, her involvement in court, and talking about the fact um, that she shouldn't go. Let's talk about that in particular. In order for you to prove, in order for the state to prove witness tampering, they have to prove that those threats or that contact happened on October 15, 2018. What does Courtney tell us? She tells us that prior, in 2015, there were a lot of text messages that were threatened. She tells us that in April of 2017, when she's in court, because Dyfus has taken away her children because of drugs, and Dyfus has also taken away Mike Robinson's child because of drugs, at that time, Dennis is in the courtroom with her. She says, Dennis tells her, don't go. And that, she tells us, is the last that she heard. She also says that he doesn't give her any specifics about testifying. Why is this important? This is important because on October 15, 2018, Courtney didn't receive a letter. From Dennis. Courtney didn't live on Farragut. And had she received that letter, you would have heard from her mouth what the letter said. You would have had her testify to the contents.
contents of the letter and receiving the letter from October 2018. We didn't hear that. Courtney had an opportunity to turn over any letters regarding threats that Dennis may have sent to her, anything that Dennis may have sent to her regarding testimony. She doesn't turn over a single letter. And we know that because Lieutenant Finnan tells you she never turned over anything. Let's get to Mike Robinson. Mike Robinson, part of Courtney's life, part of Mike Black's life, married to Kelly. Mike Robinson, who tells you in his own words that she's his little sister. Mike Robinson, who, when asked about the night of November 9, 2015, when he finally gets interviewed, not in 2015, not in 2016, not in 2017, but in 2018, August 1st, 2018, is when he is first interviewed. He first says to the lieutenant, I have no alibi. Remember that, I have no alibi. What do we learn about Mike Robinson on the stand. We learned he's a drug addict. We learned he's a convicted felon. He's a good old boy from Texas, and they carry guns in Texas. But he doesn't have a gun now because he's a convicted felon. And in 2015, he knew he couldn't carry a gun. He was law-abiding. But we know he wasn't law-abiding. How do we know that? Because he was going every morning to Heather and Keith's to get his fix, to get his fix of pills, to get his fix of meth, to get his blues, to get his sub. And what did he do after he picked up those drugs? Got in the car and drove. He was not law abiding. Mike Robinson, who by his own testimony tells you he lived on Calhoun. Calhoun, which is a stone throw away from Elmhurst. But we don't know about that because in 2015, he was never interviewed. <coughs> Mike Robinson, who through his own testimony tells you he's familiar with Cloverleaf. He's worked in Cloverleaf. He's had customers in Cloverleaf. He used Cloverleaf <coughs> as a shortcut in 2015. He obviously doesn't use it now because he doesn't live here. Mike Robinson, who knows that Courtney is having an affair with Mike Black. And we know that because of the text messages about who did you fuck on that today? And her response, Mike Black is here. What's interesting about Mike Robinson? His wife, Kelly Robinson has an affair with Mike Black. And he tells you he has anger issues. He tells you that he told Finnan that if he saw Mike Black, there would be fighting. And of course now, in 2019, he's not gonna tell you that he would be fighting. He's gonna tell you, oh no, we were friends. We were good friends. We made up. This is a man who when he's told by Courtney that Wolf supposedly put hands on her, he is so mad, he's shaking. Shaking about Courtney. Could you imagine what he was feeling when he found out that his wife was having an affair with Michael Black? What else do we know about Mike Robinson? I showed him his time card. He tells you he got done in the early afternoon. Mike Robinson's house is so close to Mike Black's that he can walk to Mike Black's home or he can ride his bike to Mike Black's home and be back to his home within the five minutes that it took for the police to arrive on Elmhurst. That's how close Mike Robinson lives to Mike Black. But 
he wasn't interviewed. He wasn't investigated. And why wasn't he investigated or interviewed? Well, according to the lieutenant, they knew of Mike Robinson in 2015, but they never questioned him until 2018. And one of the reasons for that is because he tells you that according to text messages, Mike Robinson is at Courtney's house at 741 on Farragut. Did anyone ever verify that? No, because nobody interviewed him. We know at 741, through Courtney's testimony, that she doesn't see Mike Robinson at the house. She has no dealings with Mike Robinson at 741. She tells him, I left the drugs with Marie. Marie didn't come in here and testify and tell you that Mike Robinson came to Farragut at 741. Marie wasn't even interviewed. But that's why Mike Robinson wasn't interviewed, because at 741, he was at Courtney. 